As trends in audio-focused technology show, codecs are no longer responsible for merely data conversion, but more and more DSP functions are being introduced for the codec to handle. However, what still has been troublesome in this field is the cumbersome manner to program these codecs and DSPs with unfriendly register settings and difficult to understand assembly language. Analog Devices has introduced Sigma Studio, which takes away these layers of abstraction for the customer and allows them to focus just on their implementation by an easy to use graphical user interface. The Sigma Studio tool allows customers to easily and rapidly adopt DSP functionality without the need for deep DSP know-how. However, Sigma Studio still meets the demands of experienced DSP engineers by providing runtime, fully optimized DSP code. Sigma Studio comes with a pre-built library of basic DSP building blocks and custom algorithms. With the included functions, customers can reduce their time to market by graphically building an audio design flow. Thus, customers are able to easily focus on their application as a whole while not being bogged down by the implementation. Let's take a look. This is a look at our toolbox, which contains all of our library elements. Within the basic DSP library, adders, multipliers, delays, and gains can be combined in schematic form to realize most DSP functions. From the filters library, many standard filters are available with full control to select filter type, cutoff frequency, Q, gain, and other filter parameters. Also, coefficients generated from another program can be loaded into the filter via a text file. Within the dynamics processors library, envelope followers, Limiters and standard compressors can be found in both RMS and peak form. Full control is given to the user to define the desired compression curve across 33 points along with setting time constant, hold, and decay times. There are many more blocks included with Sigma Studio, but let's take a look at how easy it is to get a sample schematic flow up and running with these audio blocks. I'm going to select inputs and outputs and drag those into the schematic workspace. Now I'm going to select a volume control and add that to the schematic workspace. I can add a pin in order to have stereo control of my volume. Now I'm going to drag an equalizer into my schematic. I can now grow the algorithm in order to have control over multiple bands. Now that I have my equalizer, I can select the filter type, can make a low shelf on the low end, and then a high shelf on the high end. I can now specify the center frequency for each of these filter types. Now I can also select what kind of curve I would like to have for my EQ. I now would like to add a compressor to control the dynamics of the schematic. I now click the Show Graph button, and I have full control over 33 points on this compression curve. I can add points and drag each of these points to whatever curve that I would like. By pressing the soft knee button, I also have a smooth curve as opposed to abrupt changes in my volume compression curve. I can also restore my curve by selecting set to flat. Now that I have all the elements that I would like to use in my schematic, I can wire them up together very easily by dragging these wires from the blue pins to the green pins. Now that I have all the elements that I want in my schematic, 
All I have to do is press the Link Compile Download button, and this program is transferred via USB to the DSP Evaluation Board. I can now drag this volume slider down and have real-time control over everything that is in the schematic. For instance, you can hear the change in frequency response as I move the slider up and down. Sigma Studio not only allows you to design your DSP program, but it also acts as a tuning tool. Parameters can be changed with graphical knobs and sliders without having to write to registers. Also, convenient application debugging tools are included within Sigma Studio. For example, you can visualize the frequency response of all of your filters by using a probe and stimulus block. Let's take a look. I'm now wiring my probe and stimulus block within my signal flow. I can see the response of my filters, and now as I move sliders up and down, the frequency response is displayed in real time on the graph. Now as parameters are updated in real time to the DSP, you can also monitor the frequency response in a visual manner. These tools make it easier for customers to understand and create their applications. Thus, a new language is established between analog devices and our customers by removing the need to talk about code and instead using graphical block representations of audio designs. This makes it easier for customers to communicate with ADI and also gives us more insight into the audio market. Thanks for watching the Sigma Studio Overview. For more information on Sigma Studio and Sigma DSP processors, please go to www.analog.com forward slash Sigma Studio or send an email to sigmadsp at analog.com with any questions.